So I'm going to propose you just to fill the typography. Let's start with this exercise. Uh, here we have this text written in a very, you know, elegant, classic, delicate and sophisticated typography. So that's a very good exercise to start explaining or putting into words or concepts what or how you feel when you look into a text set on a particular typeface. This one is simple, functional and geometric. What about this? This is fun, childish and handwritten. But something smells a little bit fishy here. Okay, oh no. Yeah, this was Comic Sans. But maybe this is not a problem at all. You need to always choose the right typography for the audience or the public of your of the business, the company that you are working for. If the logotype feels correct to the public and it's well connected with you know the business or the organization, everything is fine. Sometimes you anticipate what other designers are going to think about your work and that's not a good point at all. This is a very good one. Everybody knows this series by Netflix, Stranger Things, and the title that works as the logotype for the series looks really threatening, dark and dangerous. And the reason is very simple, it has these sharp terminals and everybody knows that in nature and in general sharp things are dangerous. So it looks really very threatening, you know, itself. Also it has this kind of gothic and old fashion look that it's always related to these dark stories. In case you didn't know, this particular typeface is Pengiat. The conclusion of all this is very simple. If you want to really know how your design looks, go ask someone who knows nothing about typography. So now let's check some famous logotypes to learn a little bit more about typography. On the top we have the Giorgio Armani logotype and it's written with Tito. And on the bottom we have a sans serif uh, based logotype, the Adidas one. And this is set in avant-garde by the master of the trade, Herb Lubalin. So you can really see the differences here. Uh, Dido really conveys luxury and sophistication. And avant-garde is a very functional and dynamic looking font. Uh, also, we need always to look into the limitations of a certain typeface. In the case of Dido, I would say that it's going to be less readable in small sizes. And for avant-garde, maybe the problem could be that it's a typeface that is very much anchored in the aesthetics of the 70s and the 80s. Here we have the Casio logo that is set in Eurostar and the Jeep that is written with Helvetica. In the case of Eurostar, it feels very technical, mainly because the shapes of the letter forms are kind of squares and it has a very strong presence. But the limitation of the problems could be that it's a font that is very attached to the 80s aesthetics and also because it's, it's an expanded typography or version of this typography uh, it's going to be more difficult to compose when you have no much room. In the case of Helvetica it's a very strong and versatile and as I would say robust font that is going to be live very well in a lot of environments but the problem could be that it has been overused a lot and that means that it's not going to stand out from the crowd so that could be a problem. Now we're going to play the wrong typeface game. On the top you have the Adidas logo with the wrong typeface in this case set or written in with Helvetica and you can feel a lot of differences it just feels wrong mainly because of the two-story A and also it feels like more compressed and a lot of stuff just feels not very right here so this feels just like this so 
Also, we are going to look into why the Adidas World Mark works so good on Avantgarde. And the main reason, at least for me, is that this typeface election really gives the, the logo type, the word mark, a really constant rhythm. You can see that in the counter forms, the negative space that is inside the letters, you see here the constant rhythm and pace. Also, the letter forms itself, uh, because this is a very geometrical font, it also has this rounded shape that it's repeated here and you know that's what makes this word mark so so nice as a recap something that we saw through all these examples is that serif fonts or typefaces especially when they are high contrast they look really sophisticated they convey luxury and tradition in the case of sans serif typographies they are very versatile they come with practicality, but they may end up generating less personality. There is a nice metaphor here, and we can say that choosing the right typeface for your logotype is the same as going to a job interview with the right look. So if they are asking for a lawyer and you go like dressed like this, it's going to be very difficult that you are going to start working on that office the next Monday. It's the same as here. Your your money on written with this fancy and strange looking typeface. It, it looks like a, a joke. So the problem with logos is that the public needs to understand them instantly. People doesn't have a lot of time to look into things. It's the same as the employer. He doesn't have much time to understand this guy. And yeah, for sure, this guy is really, or could be a brilliant lawyer, but you know, it just doesn't look like that. My advice here is just trust your eye and have some fun out there when you choose the typefaces because it's a really, really fun process.